on Monday Night Raw, we had five people move forward in the WWE title tournament. Now, who can I say who they are? No. Oh. Oh, sure. Roman Reigns, Cesaro, Kevin Owens, Dolph Ziggler, and Dean Ambrose. And tonight, we have three, three more matches to decide who moves forward into the quarterfinals of this tournament, heading even closer to Survivor Series. Ladies and, and gentlemen. And the winners were Brooklyn Brawler and Gobbledy Cooker and Kamala. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the SmackDown Rundown. Pull! Well, that didn't work. Nope. But we're going to talk about some title matches, title tournament matches first. Heck, uh, yeah. Our first one, we had Neville versus King Barrett. These are two... We had to have this one first. Two British guys in fighting Britain. it out in England, you know, just and they fucking. Why were the British guys in England? They need to be in Britain. Isn't that the same thing? You'd be like the British guys over in England and the English guys over in Britain and stuff. That's the same thing. Ah, damn. Get <laughs> your geography straight, bro. I done, I done been geographoned. <laughs> geographoned. No, uh, this was awesome. I I enjoyed this match a lot. It was a good match. Neville got tossed around like a fucking rag doll. Okay, can we say that first tough thing when he was hanging with his knees over the top rope and yeah. Barrett slammed him on his head? Barrett didn't quite didn't quite get him over the rope as much as he wanted him to. He got caught on like the the back of his kick pads or something, and then just dropped Neville right on his head. He was chucking him out of the ring where he was just like skipping across the ground into the barricade. Yeah, uh, you know, whacking no. his face on the commentary table, throwing him in, just this was intense. Yeah, no, Barrett was in full force for this match, and it it worked wonders. And I love that Neville pulled off the, the Jeff Hardy run on the guardrail. I was trying, like, I thought it was the goofiest looking thing, but I like because he does he he's really good at keeping his balance, but he does that little airplane. Yeah. Uh, like like his arms out keeping his balance, and it looked funny. But yeah, he did end up... Uh, yeah, somersault sent on it. Looked yeah, really good. just out of nowhere. Fantastic. Uh, and Barrett uh, ended up trying to hit the bull hammer for the finish. Missed it. Then uh, Neville went for some sort of some sort of tilt-a-whirl move where Barrett actually grabbed him for Wasteland. But before he could do Wasteland, Neville then turned it into a DDT, setting him up for the red arrow. And Neville moves forward... And I believe this Monday on Raw, we'll face Kevin Owens yes. in the quarterfinals. So, a fantastic uh, first first round match for those two guys. Uh, now, the next one was the mismatched, like, you know who's going to win going to this one. We had the Lucha Dragons being represented by Kalisto taking on the big guy Ryback. With the blue beanie in his corner. Yes, the beanie more. Uh... I mean, it's Fuzzy it's cool. it's it's kind of obvious when you look at it like this. Like, Ryback is just too big. He's been in title matches before. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a former Intercontinental Champion. He's he's kind of a shoe in for for this kind of tournament. You'd expect him to move forward, and he didn't. Nope. Kalisto beat him. Like, him and Kalisto had a really good match. Like, yes. They worked off of each other so it well. It makes you realize, WWE, fucking make Ryback a heel again. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I, I like the fact that they had respect in this match, though. There was I didn't see any respect during the match. It wasn't until well, no, after no, the match. No, but they shook hands before the match. They, yeah. had, they had a competitive match. Ryback got frustrated a couple times. Looked like he wanted to kill Kalisto. Well, and he tried. He was chucking him out of the ring yeah. and stuff too. You know, hit 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 the the big meat hook clothesline on him, uh, and then I don't know what exactly Ryback. Th well, okay, let's talk about the first off. You know, that we had we had the, the the struggle at first where Ryback was just tossing him back, and then Kalisto did some bouncing around and yeah, hit like, him with a Selena Del Sol very early, early in the match, and this guy. Kevin Hobb jumped out of his freaking seat thinking, it's over right now! And Ryback kicked out. Yeah, yeah. No, that was... I My hopes were a little high. I, I've never... Ryback seen... kicked out so hard, Kalisto went out of the ring. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and so Kalisto had to regroup. But yeah, just the back and forth was great. And then for the finish, 
did Ryback set him up on the top rope, or did he like stop him from doing something? He's, I'm pretty sure he stopped him from doing something up there. Well, whatever. What like Ryback goes and he up? Went up like he was going to give him like a back suplex yeah, off the rope. Yeah, you know, Ryback's on the second rope. We got Kalisto on the top rope, and yeah, Ryback's definitely like trying to stop him from doing something. Go on, trying to hit that back suplex, and then you know Kalisto starts elbowing him off. You're expecting Ryback to fall, but instead Kalisto grabs him, sets him up, and hits. A second rope, Selena Del Sol. I'll call it the Super Soul. And picks up the win, and he's moving forward into the yes. title tournament. Yes, yes, more yes. Yes. Uh, I got up and danced. So like, like, you were just... I've never... I don't think I've ever seen you... No, the last time I saw you that happy for the finish of a match was when Kevin Owens beat John Cena. Yeah, really? I mean, I think it's I think it's been about been about six months. I was gonna say yesterday when the mechanics won the tag oh, team Oh, that's titles. true. That's true. That, that, was, that was a pretty big one too. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's cat is angry. It's 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 been a good year for uh, for some like you know up and coming guys. You know, just and a good year for people who I don't like losing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He had all of his Except least favorite. Brock Lesnar. Wow. Well, he had all of his least favorite people eliminated from his tournament. Yeah, each little quarter bracket had somebody I did really, I really, really dislike. There's Sheamus and Ryback and Titus O'Neil, Titus O'Neil and The Miz. Yeah, and, and they, they all got eliminated. All got eliminated in the first round. Uh, we got one more first round match. We have Stardust taking on Alberto. <laughs> taking on Alberto Del Rio. That. Rio. For those of you listening to the podcast, that's all coming out of his mouth. Are you, are you guitar soloing? What are you doing? I'm doing a, a tiny version of Alberto Del Rio's theme song. It's weird. It's a little weird. It's, it's weird. It's like um, helium chipmunk stuff. Uh, this was probably my least favorite first round match. This didn't. This didn't have as much competitiveness in it as I thought it should have, and maybe that's just because they're trying to put Del Rio over a lot stronger, and so they didn't really give a lot to Stardust. Yeah, I felt Stardust, you know, unfortunately had to really fall short of what his I potential they had, is. They had a lot of really good uh, pinning combinations. Yeah, I, th- I think so. that that was that was about the that was about. You know the biggest takeaway from the match, like there there wasn't really anything spectacular from this match. Yeah, no, it it wasn't. It definitely wasn't the best match of the night or of the tournament so far. But what it did is it did sort of make me go. I I kind of want to see Stardust for Del Rio again. See if they they can. Because I was thinking, you know, they did good. Yeah, it's not to and say it, they, it, did, it, they it, had bad chemistry. It, or anything, it left but... me feeling like, okay, they did what they did under these circumstances, but under different circumstances, I bet these guys could pull off a really good match. Like, a really good match. That's true. Um, but yeah, uh, so Del Rio would end up setting <laughs> Stardust up uh, in Tree of Woe. How did Stardust And, uh... Out? Yeah, like that. Uh... Hitting, uh, nope, that was not it. Uh, Del Rio would hit him with a double stomp and pick up the win. Go up some stairs. <laughs> he can't do that. He's on a scooter. Uh, he gets out of the scooter. Walks up the stairs. He has to use the handrails on those sides. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, Del Rio picks up the win with the double stomp at the corner, uh, and he moves on, and he will face Kalisto in the quarterfinals. So officially, like a lucha libre match. So officially, our quarterfinals matches. We have Roman Reigns versus Cesaro. Alberto Del Rio versus Kalisto. We have Dean Ambrose versus Dolph Ziggler. And Kevin Steen versus Pac. WWE, WWE style that. Uh, yeah, Kevin Owens versus Neville. There we go. Uh, and I'm, from what I'm gathering, we should get that on Monday Night Raw. Yeah, I'm pretty sure all the quarterfinal matches are going to happen on Raw. And so then uh, we'll be getting our uh, semifinals and finals at Survivor Series. Hopefully not on SmackDown. I would hope not. 
but with tournament stuff aside, let's talk about the rest of oh, you know SmackDown. What I'm do? Oh, here's my prediction. I'm predicting again. Okay. This happens sometimes. Should we bring, uh, should we bring up the? Uh, if the, you want. Okay. Uh, but I, it, that doesn't really. I don't think it's going to add anything if you do. Okay. But it won't take away if you do either. All right. Well, um, here is the bracket uh, for a reference. Okay. So Roman Reigns will advance. Uh, Alberto Del Rio will advance, Dean Ambrose will advance, and Kevin Owens will advance. So on SmackDown, rather than doing any tournament matches, they're going to put Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose versus Alberto Del Rio and Kevin Owens. Yeah. I, I, I can definitely see that happening. Um, Alright, so moving on to non-tournament stuff. We had uh, the Wyatt family open up SmackDown. Yeah, they uh, cut the promo saying, dude, brothers to destruction, what you did was a cool. We want to fight you in a match at the series full of survival. That that actually is pretty accurate, yeah. except they sound cooler when I say it because they're all creepy and shit. Um, yeah, Bray Wyatt saying Undertaker, uh, you know, you and me at Survivor Series, your family versus mine, and uh, you know they're gonna show how dominant they are by you know all of the henchmen having matches tonight. First off. Braun Strowman is taking on Fondango. Yeah, Bray Wyatt's all like, my family's stronger than your family. Yeah. But they don't realize, like, somewhere, like, second, third cousin, twice remove, uh, Big Show and Mark Henry are also related to the Brothers of Destruction. That would... Fuck, man. That would... That, I think that would ruin Wyatt's plan. <laughs> I think yes. I think that would ruin things real fast if those four showed up. Jesus Christ. Attitude Eric, I'm gonna whoop your ass. Um, yeah, Strowman versus Fandango goes pretty much the way you'd think it would. Yeah, like Strowman murdered him. Yeah. Um, Without the murder. Fandango tried. Yes. I mean, he, he put up a hell of a fight. He just didn't have enough fight to take down the face of destruction. Yeah. And uh, he'd get choked out pretty quick. He couldn't save the last dance. That makes it extra depressing when you put it that way. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, our main event is the Usos taking on uh, Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. And let me tell you, I was jazzed when I saw that this was going to be on the show. Like this is like the when the sh when SmackDown came on, this was the graphic that they showed saying, yeah. "Hey, our main event tonight is going to be the Wyatt Family versus the Usos." And I went, "Damn, awesome!" Because these guys had like. Nine or ten like phenomenal matches. Yeah. Back when the Usos were tag team champions. Oh, absolutely. And freaking a. There was multiple. You can't be disappointed. No, there was multiple times that we thought the Wyatt family were going to win the titles from the Usos. Yeah. Uh, and we had the Usos actually talk to Renee Young before this match, uh, saying, you know, there, there's no, there's no love lost between the Usos and the Wyatt family. We no have, we have a history, at all. and it's not about forgive and forget. It's about. Uh, he says it's about get even and get going. So the Usos going in with uh, with very high hopes, looking to make a point. You know they've come back and they haven't really had a chance to show their dominance much, uh, just with the places that they've been put. But they're looking to make a statement against the Wyatt family, and this match was fantastic. Yeah, I think if you can beat Rowan and Harper, two other guys of that size, you're definitely showing. What you're made of. Yeah. No, and it was, you know, great chemistry. There was no interference, <coughs> excuse me, uh, during the match by Strowman and Wyatt, who sat in the, uh, sat in the IOA watching the match the whole time. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like they pit, it's like they never stopped wrestling each other. They, yeah. just, they picked right up where they were the last time they faced each other. Just great chemistry. Uh, you know, the Usos can can take an ass whooping, and you got two big guys like Rowan and Harper that can give it to them. Yeah, and they had a great uh, little one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one the, the combo thing going on where uh, Harper hit one of the Usos with a sit-out powerbomb. Yes. The other Uso broke the pin up with a super fly splash, and then Rowan just came in and decided to do a running splash. <laughs> yeah, this is... <laughs> Everybody wanted to fly, and then and then you you kind of started to see uh, Wyatt and Strowman kind of get a little antsy at this point. Because yeah, I mean the Usos ended up like double super kicking Rowan out of the ring and doing dives and stuff. Yeah, they they super kicked Rowan out. They double clotheslined Harper. 
Then they did the then they did the double dive, and when they tossed, uh, you know, they, they ended up getting back in. And it's at that point Wyatt Wyatt stands up. Him and Strowman join Eric Rowan and Luke Harper, and we get them surrounding the ring. So at this point, the match is a no contest. There's, yeah. there's no, there were really, I don't even think the bell rang. I don't recall. There was, there was no, no actual decision, but we commence a four on two beatdown where the Wyatt family just destroy the Usos. Yes. Jay ends up getting taken out real early. Uh, he, he gets hit with the double choke slam, and then gets tossed out. And then it's just it's all Jimmy. Jimmy gets you know just choked gets, out. Yeah, he gets choked out. Then he gets the real fast sister Abigail. And then Wyatt's like, you know what? I'm not done. And he goes to set up for a second sister Abigail. But before he's able to do that, Gong. we get the bells. The bells hit. We get the fire exploding from from lightning the, fire. Uh, yeah, fire up on the stage. And then we get Undertaker's voice telling Bray Wyatt that. He's accepting the challenge of Survivor Series, and at Survivor Series, his family will rest in peace. You get the lightning hit in the post, the fire goes off, so we have the challenge, we have the match set, we are getting the Brothers of Destruction, and probably two other partners to take on all four members of the Wyatt family. Uh, lots of rumors going around as to who could be potential partners. Yeah, lots. Uh, do you want to talk about the... the the teasing tweet that we that we heard from Finn Balor earlier. Oh, well, it wasn't a tweet. It was uh, Finn Balor at uh, he joined. Oh, it was, it was he joined the, the NXT the, panel. Yeah, he joined uh, the WWE tour in the UK. Right. And they did an NXT Stars panel with some past and present members of the NXT roster. And uh, somebody asked him about uh, his future plans and. He hinted that he might debut a lot sooner than people could think, and that there is potentially someone he's willing to help out. And a lot of people are going, ooh, he's talking about Undertaker. Yeah, and with the fact that this was a four-on-two beatdown on the Usos, we can see the Usos join up with the Brothers of Destruction. Yeah, a lot of people have suggested the Dudley Boys. D yeah, Dudley Boys would be great. Um, uh, and Sting was a rumored name. Yeah, if he's medically um, cleared, yeah, obviously. Well, a lot of people were talking about the fact that... Uh, they were uh, supposed to do uh, Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, and Braun Strowman versus Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Sting. Exactly. Uh, and so there's a chance that Sting could get thrown in. Yeah, I mean the I mean the options are really open at this point because yes. there ha you know there hasn't been any uh, hinting as far as storyline wise towards who could possibly be it. It's all just been fantasy booking on the internet. I could be Brother Love and Ted DiBiase. Uh, well, uh, this is 25 years of The Undertaker, so let's just recreate that original moment. I'd be okay with that. With Kane, who didn't show up until seven years later. Um, we'll have Jim Dine Hart, Bret Hart, and Coco Beware all at ringside. Sure. And I don't remember who Ted DiBiase's other two tag team partners were. No, Power and Glory, I think. Paul Rollbutt and Hercules. If you know for sure, post down in the comments. Other than that, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, favor, and subscribe. And click all those links down in the description. We There's got so many links. We got Facebook, we got Twitter, we got Tumblr, we got Instagram, we got Reddit, and we got two emails. And all below that is the SoundCloud link. For those of you listening on SoundCloud, thanks for podcast. following the podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for following. We appreciate it. Check out all those other links for, uh, you know, all, we share all types of stuff on Facebook and Tumblr. Uh, you know, just, just you know, let, let's get in on, on the discussion. Who do you guys think is going to be joining the team of Undertaker and Kane to if face anybody. the Wyatt family? Yeah, are they going to go four on two? Or are they going to get a couple partners? What do you think is going to happen? Who do you see going into the finals of the title tournament at Survivor Shannon. Series? That's totally not going to happen, oh. uh, unless he has a buy all the way to the finals, ready like a triple threat. Yeah, he was part of the corporation. He might as well be part of he the. He was part. He's part of the corporation. By part of the car corporation. Thank you for that. The magic corporation. Uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, go ahead and check out that playlist. Yes. On the other side there. of Kevin Hawk, we got a raw review up there. We got a midweek wrap up where we're talking about tag team title matches, Bob villains defending title. against the mechanics. We got this SmackDown running and coming up soon. Coming up this Monday, we'll have a 
any news talking about who wants survival the fittest at Ring of Honor. Who did win the Bible? Who the is the fittest to survive? You will find out this Monday, unless you watch it over the weekend, then you'll know before I do. Oh. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah. And we'll see you, or we'll, I mean, you can see us, or you can listen to and us. And I might talk about Ronda Rousey fighting this weekend. All right. And this just could happen. I gush when she fights. Okay. Thanks for watching and listening, and we'll see you at whatever video slash podcast you decide to watch slash listen to next.